Charge up your game with excitement. Highest odds on the market. Coverage of all live and pre-match events. Place your bets with Solid Bookmaker and win with your favorite teams. Take what's rightfully yours with GG.Bet. Welcome everyone to our second map of the best of three. It is still the same teams here, Ehome versus BTRG. Though our scenery has changed a little bit, we are here on Inferno. And as we do see on a map like this, it is probably going to be... Uh, yes, Ehome starting things off here on the CD side, BTRG on the T side, and... I don't know, the problem is when you have a team like BTRG starting things off on the T side, they need a T side, I believe. We saw that on the previous map, on train, they just got absolutely pummeled on the CD side. I think they ended up winning, what, two rounds on the CD side? That was bad. That was a very poor performance from their side. So they're really going to have to step it up here on the tri on the, the T side of Inferno. Good shots coming in with the story, but he'll still be able to run away with his life intact. Oh, good shot coming in from the story, though. They've got a pretty neat setup here set up. But Ehome, uh, I'm not sure if Zane should continue on with the push here. He does find the kill here. Good opportunity to back away. And he will do so with his life intact. So this is still good trades here for Ehome. They might have lost some HP, sure. But they still get the kills, and that's the important bit. Now, as we do see the two players here from BTRG, they are in middle. I would presume it is maybe going to be now either a fake, some sort of elaborate fake, or it is just going to be a straight-up commitment on the A-bomb side. They still have utility to work with. That's the interesting bit. You have ADR King of the Smoke as well as Impression. So they can very easily try to pull off a smoke there on one of the bomb sites. But it looks like no. It is going to be a commitment here on the A side. There's Impression lining up the smoke grenade. He does throw it out for an easier plan on the bomb side. Though the positioning here from Ehome above the players on the pit. It's so hard to find some of these kills here. PDRG, they're getting softened up by the USPs. But they are still in a position to maybe even plant the bomb. This is not too shabby here for PTRG. But now, once the smoke's in a fading, ah, that is going to be a difficult hold here. Both players, both of them on the side, ADR can impression. How to find some of these kills here? They do not succeed. That's going to be Ehome winning the pistol round without even losing a single player. That is very swiftly done here by the CTs. And for those who are wondering, our very first map of the best of three, it was Inferno. It was the map pick of, oh, pardon me, it was Train. Uh, the heat's getting me, isn't it? The heat is getting me. It was Train, and it was the map pick of BTRG, and Ehome won it 16-9, to 9, I'd like to say. I think it was 16-9. to 9. Now, the second map, obviously, is the map pick here of Ehome, so with them starting things off here on the CD side, that is the scary bit here for BTRG. Of course, BTRG, this is your map pick. I'm sure they have some sort of game plan coming into this one, but... I mean, Ehome, they've been looking pretty solid on the CT side, so right now, it is destroyed. Doing some of the damage and impression, but he will be surviving that position. Now it is, of course, the players here from the T side kind of sticking this one together. They only have Caddy, he was looking towards Banana, hoping to spot at a push, but I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon here. Ehome are playing this one safe, and that's the important bit on a round like this. You want to be very cautious in your approach. PTR Joe, the BTRG players have been given a lot of freedom, I'd like to say. I mean, they were able to take mid control uncontested whatsoever. Now, Jerome trying to punish Fierce, though. He does get the tagging, but not the kill. Marek. Oh, this is pretty bad. He spots the players, but it's a bit too late. They can still push him down. They find the kill here in Marek, but they're going to continue on running through with his knife. Akadi, big mistake. But this is good right now for the T side. Look at this. We have three players in Banana here from BTRG, and only the one defender destroyer. So he's going to have to make this hold work. They're going to shift on through. He finds the first one. He spots the second one. Can get the kill, though. Impression succeeds. And now that's the B bomb set open for business. If anyone's going to be feeling pressure, it probably is the Ehome guys. Insane though. Good shots for the UMP. The, both of the players line up. They know the position of the last guy. And there we go. That's pretty much the round here. Ehome, they've got it. But they had to break a sweat. 
Oh, for sure, they had to break a sweat. If we have Insane in that position, right? He's coming in there from the church. If the, both of the players don't line up and say he gets taken out, that is such a winnable position here for BTRG. It is, of course, a purchase coming in from the terror side. And I'll give him that. It's a pretty good looking purchase here. We have AK 47s can play a lot of utility as well to work with. So this is very nice here for BTRG. Do we see some of the players coming in here? Already pushing in through the smoke here. I'd say you gotta be quite careful here for BTRG, but they wanna use the element of surprise. This could help them to secure at least a kill here. Flash reads in, but Impression still succeeds with a kill. He goes for more, but he can't get it done. Insane secures both of them. And these trades, these trades are still very good here for Ehome. There we go, Jerome picks up a kill. And suddenly, yeah, it's still a lot of gunfights going on here. In middle, Fierce picks it up, and now it's up to Jerome and Dreer. For now, at least, Fates picks up his first kill pretty early on here in the matchup. So maybe he will be able to bounce back here from the previous map because, let's be real, in the previous map, Fates was non-existent. But here things are a little bit different though, on the T side. Both the players on BTRG sticking together, that is good. In a situation like this, they can still overwhelm one of the bomb sites here because they're down to three CTs and there's always the possibility that it could be either a one CT or maybe even two holding one of the sites. Here though on the B site, it is Destroyer by his loans of taking the off angle though, picks up both of those kills. And that's gonna allow Ehum to secure yet another round, but that was ballsy stuff from Destroyer. I mean, more often than not, in a situation like this, when you're down to only two other teammates surviving alongside yourself, you're probably gonna hold a more passive position to allow your teammates to go in for the rotate as quickly as possible, but not Destroyer. He goes towards the fountain, takes an off angle, and he succeeds in getting both those kills. Great stuff, great stuff indeed. And now they put Terror side in a pretty difficult economical conundrum where some of the players have decided to go for Nico, but not Impression. Impression says like, listen, I can frag people, okay? So he's got the AK-47 to work with. Now the question is, can he find any of these frags from Molotov? First I'm catting out of position. Not sure why you decided to actually pull out the knife in that position. Once the Molotov reigns in, it's pretty obvious that you're gonna have to fight for your life. So trying to escape the flames, pretty difficult. Here though, Impression takes down Merrick. And BTRG with a whole minute to work with, they don't necessarily have to commit this A-side play. But as they are going for the wraparound, it is going to be the side take. There are players in the pit area. Very hard to get them out of there. But Lamplight, he picks up two. And now the third one is in his possession as well. That is going to be the fourth round here for Ehome. As BTRG's attempt at hitting the bomb site was... It was a nice attempt. I'll give him that. I'll give him a gold star for the attempt. It's just that Ehome's players, I mean, they position themselves in the pit. And it's so hard to eliminate the CTs out of the pit area. If they don't have utility to work with, say the HE grenades, the Molotovs, the flashes, forcing our players out of pit is pretty much impossible. They are the ones who are supposed to take the fights, and if they don't, well, that's a whole different story, isn't it? Maybe then some of the BTRG players could have gone a bit close to the bomb site and get some of those kills. But whatever, that was just an equal round. This is the proper investment here from the T side. Molotov's running in. A lot of utility being deployed here. No one's really looking towards Marek. Big mistake. He picks up free. There's Jerome going to town. He also get himself a couple kills, so it's not too bad here. We can see the destroyer here with the AK-47. Smoke soft area. Gotta make sure Jerome doesn't cross, or if he does, it's gonna be a very ballsy play. Now, in this position in particular, Jerome is on the side. But he still doesn't have his teammates, not to mention they don't have the bomb. That's the big issue. There's a position here, though. Oh, there you go. Dreer at least picks up a smoke grenade. Again, throws it down across. And I'm surprised to note that 
none of the players have really gone for the rotation here. Now I think they've heard the footsteps of the second guy. And as the bomb is being planted, yes, it's pretty obvious. This is the B-side hit. It's going to be Trier picking up the kill here in the Destroyer. I think he should have waited for his teammates before he really committed to the fight. And now we can see some of the counter utility being thrown out here from Ehome. The Molotovs are in the flashes as well. They haven't really forced out Jerome out of position. That's a big mistake. He picks the kill. Now it's down to one versus one. Good positioning here for Jerome. But now Fierce, can he get it done? Yes, he can. This is going to be, yes, the defuse coming in. Plenty of time here for Fierce. And I mean... If it hadn't been for Fierce picking up the kill on Dreer, I think that should have been around for BTRG because you think about it, you have a player in Coffins, so you have Jerome holding that angle as well. They can set up a very formidable crossfire. And yet, because Fierce was able to take down Dreer, he then knows the posi positioning of Jerome, and it's an easy route. So far, it hasn't been looking that great here for the likes of BTRG. Five rounds have been played out. All five of them went in favor of Ehome, and BTRG, they were pretty close to some of these rounds. I mean, if you take a look, uh, this last round was probably the closest they've ever been to securing a victory. So don't count out the terror side just yet. They're still in a position where they can try to make this one work, where they can still come out victorious here in the first half, or the very least, half of Formidable's scrolling on Inferno. No banana presence here from Ehome. That's the interesting bit. They've already wasted all of their utility on banana presence. And once they've run out of it, they're just back in the lead. A lot of teams, once they do go for the presence there, they're going at least, finally he's going to land the kill their ADR, and now Insane is going to have to back away. He wants to play this one quite safely. Now, one of the things I wanted to talk about earlier is that Ehome, they've expended a lot of utility taking over Banana Control. And a lot of times, if you're going to be using that utility to take over Banana, you'll have teams holding it, but not Ehome. They've deployed their utility, and they've backed away. Except for Merrick, who we saw try to go for the fight there in Caddy. Twenty seconds remaining. BTRG has to make the play here, and as the smoke grenades are being thrown out here at the B bomb site, looks like it is the A. Pardon me, the B site hit destroyer. Hold the angle there, but they're taking their sweet time actually entering the site. This is the problem, though. No one's really planted the bomb just yet. The bomb is being planted. They can't really find the shot though, and now it's Trier to pick up too. Now this is a dual position here for BTRG, Trier and Impression, both of the players on the side itself. I think even Impression has gone for the... Yeah, he's holding CT. He's gonna make sure no one's gonna come in from that part of the map, and you might be surprised to note that both of the CTs, both of them coming from the same angle, now he rotates. The position here for BTRG is pretty good here. You have a player in dark, you have a player on the coffins. They should be able to come out on top here, but it's fierce to pick up the first one. He goes for the spray transfer, but he cannot succeed. That is going to be the first round here for BTRG. Not the cleanest of rounds, but a victory nonetheless. Yadlov Eshkedit. Now that is a nickname if I've ever seen one. <laughs> oh boy. Anyhow, you can see that this round is not looking too great here for Ehome. They're coming into this one without barely any weaponry. Only some of those upgraded pistols. He max 7 of the hands here fears. So this should be quite the easy round here for BTRG to pick up if they don't make any mistakes. There are two players in the apartments, and it doesn't look like the T's are even thinking about clearing that part of the map. That's a big mistake, Destroyer! Coming in from middle, he takes down Caddy, and now, as you're entering the site, they still gotta eliminate the guys in the apartments. And they get it done here, and so does the bomb plant come in. The three remaining players here from Ehome 
definitely want to tempt this one to try and get some of those exit frags, but no, they're backing away. That's that's interesting. I was actually hoping to see them set up at least for some exit frags to pick up kills, but they're backing away entirely, which is very odd. I mean, I'm not sure why if you're Marek or Insane, you want to even think about keeping those P250s. The next round, you will still have a proper investment, so these P250s won't matter too much. Unless they're thinking about going with Double Eagle, which honestly it could be the case. If I take a look at the money here for Destroyer, all this thing at $1,700. Lamplight, $1,800. Yeah, I think it is going to be the Double Eagle here for E-Home. They want to try to build up as big of a bank as possible here on the CD side. Fierce though, the max 7, oh good shot coming in. There's got to be quite careful in the apartments, I mean you can get very easily wall banged there from one of the players in second mid. It is now an interesting position here for the likes of BTRG because I think they realize I guess the max 7 coming into play it probably is yet another eco here for he home. So they must be a bit more careful in their approach. Even though it is like simple eco, pistols, max seven. I mean, there are some of these tight engagements here on a map like Inferno where you can get very easily shut down, like I mentioned, by the pistols and even that one max seven. So now it is very methodically here from BTRG. We do have Drear. Can I clear our middle here? Not sure if I agree that he's doing it by his lone, so we could definitely use the backup of one of his teammates here. And it's also quite weird, in a round like this, BTRG want to acquire as much map control as possible before committing to one of the sites. But now it is going to be a hit here on the B side, 30 seconds remaining, there are 4 players here from Ecom, and they haven't seen a single one of them. Lamplight picks up on one of his kills now, and now it's Jerome and Drear left in the 2 versus 5 in which, 20 seconds remaining, they must commit here. They might try to think of, oh guys, let's try to back away, there's no way in the world we're winning this one, but, ah... There's Fierce with a max 7. He's waiting for this opportunity. And the thing once the timer runs out, yeah, they're gonna try to hunt him down. This is smart right now. Lamp he actually lands the jumping shot. CZ headshot. Okay, that is... Wow, that's some good RNG, not gonna lie. Right, this is not the best economical situation here for BTRG. We can see that, yes, they have gone for the purchase here, but they're lacking when it comes down to weaponry. A MAC-10 here for Fates. You have a UMP here for Caddy. Not a lot of utility as well. Again, Ecom being very methodical in their approach in Banana. They've thrown down the smoke towards the lower part of Banana. They've thrown down the Molotov towards long, towards that corner. And again, they have full banana presence. They can leave only the one player holding that part of the angle. As well as you can have someone else go towards the A side. And now as the commitment is happening here, ADR pushing for the flames here. The stir had no idea about that being a possibility. So this faster style of play here could work out here for BTRG. But Merrick tries to go for more here. He will be punished at the end. And now as the exchanges are happening here on the A bomb site. It is going to be insane making the rotate happen here. Impression, only 10 points of health. Should be an easy kill here for Fierce. But he wants to try to survive this one for as long as possible, but insane is here with the rotate. And there we go, the seventh round here for Ehome. But all things considering, with well, this being a faster style of round here for BTRG, this is one of the instances where they've been probably the closest to securing the victory. Definitely one of the closest rounds they've ever been to securing a victory here. Imagine if they take down the pit guy. I think that's somewhat of a winnable situation there for impression, but it simply was not meant to be. And as the first half is coming to a close, BTRG are now stuck in this very weird limbo.
as you might have noticed, guys. One round, they could pull off a pretty beefy looking purchase, but they sounds and whatnot. But if they end up losing that round, the next one is back in evil territory. And this is always a very weird limb, but which you could get stuck in, as well as on the CT side and on the T side. Yeah, clean stuff coming in here from Ecom. So far, not losing a single player, allowing uh, Fates to secure the site, but he's going to get taken out short after. Hey, the Arcane Gang impression, sticking this one together. Hoping to find some of these engagements here, but by this point, doing economical damage is still quite important. We can see that the players here from Ecom, they don't really have a lot of money here. You have individuals like Fierce, Merrick, um, and of course Destroyer, who are sitting at a pretty comfortable amount. But then you have Lamplight on only 850. Um, Insane was only $1,750. That's not a lot of money. But because now they've secured this round without losing a single individual, that is great for the economy here of Ecom. But now, of course, a pause being taken here for the T side. One of the things I always wondered about, how does a team like BTRG communicate? Because you have an Estonian, two Chinese players, and two from Indonesia. Do they communicate in English? Do they communicate in Mandarin? Hmm. It's always quite interesting when you think about it. I guess that's also one of the main reasons why their T-signs have been pretty... How shall I say? Lackluster. There we go, that's the word. Barely picking up any rounds, looking very disjointed, going down for a lot of these individual engagements, and sure, they have the players who can win some of these fights. You have Fates, you have Impression, you have ADR King. But, the thing is though, their individuals are having a pretty hard time here. Impression even with single date kills, I mean, it's not that great when you think about it. Yes, Caddy is sending only the one kill, but there's not a big disparity in terms of kills. Nade's coming out here from BTRG, or shall I say the singular Nade. Throwing down the Molotov. Okay, this is nice. BTRG gonna be taking over some of that mid presence. There aren't any players here, they have backed away, and this is nice. Ehome, they're very close to securing the bombs, so they take down the two players here. And there we go, the bomb side is in control here of BTRG. And if Ehome even want to contest this round, it is going to have to be a commitment here. But no, they realize a 5 versus 3 retake is too much for us. Let's just go for the save here. That's a very reasonable position. They go for the save here, they're going to be able to keep the free weapons here. And if they do... It's going to be yet another BV purchase here from Ehome. But look at this, like BTRG, this is probably one of the things they're going to be focusing on uh, moving forward here in the first half. They've noticed that their execute play, once they have like five individuals barreling their way over the bomb sites, that seems to be a winning formula. So I think they definitely want to continue on doing it. Not sure if it's going to be strictly on A bomb site. Or will they actually change things up and try to go towards B? The biggest problem right now for BTRG is that early banana presence from Ehome. Every single round, Ehome, they have two of the players throwing down grenades, throwing down the early banana smoke, forcing out the BTR players to play passively towards banana and not even commit. Oh, this is a faster play here from the BTRG, guys. This is nice to see. There we go. Like I said, they found the winning formula. It is just going to be a street of push towards Banana. The guys here from Ecom weren't even anticipating it. They were, oh, you know, they were walking out. They were ready to throw down their grenades. And then they see the T players just pop up right in front of them. So this is good right now for BTRG. They've picked up themselves a second round in a row, which, as you saw in the past, was pretty difficult. Though, as I say that they have picked it up, I mean, they still haven't really won it. We can see that Fierce is trying to attempt to retake this, but 
This is going to be quite difficult. He doesn't even have a defuse kit to work with, which is odd because he did have money to invest in the kit. Yeah, I'm not even sure why he's going for this one at this point. Like, if he saves the AK-47, if he would have saved it, I think Ehum... Okay, I think one way or the other, he would still invest here. But if they would have saved the round earlier there, that's again another beefy purchase from Ehome. Now that the player has died, I think it's going to be um, probably Marek dropping off a Maz and him just sticking with AG or an M4 in that position. Counter Terrorist timeout. Wow. I didn't expect to see that one. Primarily, from what I can tell, um, during the lower bracket stage, I've been primarily casting some of the lower bracket games. The teams would not take timeouts, okay? Teams would not take timeouts. You're winning a game 14 6, right? You're winning a game 14 6. You're only two rounds away from securing yourself the victory here. It is 14 14. Make a guess, guys. Do you think the team that was winning takes the timeout? No, <laughs> they do not. They simply do not. They just go for it. They go to overtime. They get their butts whooped. And that's pretty much it. Here, I'm very surprised to see that both these teams are taking the timelines. Not only a team like BTRG, but Ehome. They realize this is their old map pick. And they're actually very close to securing the victory here in the semi-final stages of the lower bracket. It is slow. You know, for the team that's in here in the lower bracket, it's still a very long journey to secure a victory for the close qualifier. Uh, pardon me, not the close qualifier, but for the minor itself. From this stage moving forward, I think the team has to win about three best of three, so that is still quite a lot. Of course, you still have one of the teams who has already qualified for the minor. That is everyone's favorite, Tai Lu. Now though, Caddy clearing out banana. Let's get softened up with that flame. Scuffed by the Molotov. Now we can see this is a very passive hold here from the Ehome players. They're no longer going for any sort of banana presence. They're just continuously holding their positions. Here on the A side, they're very passive. I think they have one of their players that's probably yeah, destroyer holding with an AWP. ADR King gonna try to pull off a fake here. He is the only player here, so that's the question how effective will it be? In fact, it is. It's gonna force out a player like it's sure to back away from Archway. But at the same time, he's also just that one step closer towards the B side hit, which in fact is happening right now. The players, they're pushing through the smoke. Ecom, they've used their utility to perfection, and now it is gonna be insanity picking up the kills. ADR, even though he's here in ZD spawn. He's gonna get taken out. Nine rounds here for Ehome. Good success there from the seed. He's really well done on the hold. I actually didn't really notice it from the POV on the guys on the B side, but from what I could tell, with 20 seconds remaining, that was when they threw down their very last smoke grenade. And we just saw the effects of it. Because they were able to hold on to their utility for such a long period of time, once they throw down the smoke grenade, BTRG, they have to commit for the smoke. And once you do go in through the smoke, like, you're pretty much a goner. You pop out of smoke, you don't see a thing, you get shut down by a player with a Moss. Oh, good early pickup here from Impression. He eliminates the opera here, so Ehome gonna have to be more careful with their approach here. Mm, looks like Fierce is contemplating about going in Boiler. Does have a lamp light to back him up. These are still some good trades here. He anticipates, he looks around, he gets the third kill. He stops the push in its tracks. Without lamp light, this is possibly now around here for BTRG. But, enough of hypotheticals. In practice, this is around here for E Home. Lamp light's been going for the peak. He does not secure the kill just yet. But it doesn't necessarily even have to commit by this point. This is still a very winnable situation here for Ehome. They can just play this one safe. And Sadie is going to be playing this one maybe even a bit too safe. He's out there all the way in CD spawn. 
At the same time, once you see the smoke grenade being deployed, it's pretty obvious what's going on here. There you go, smoke burn out. Hoping to firing up a kill does do some damage though, no kill just yet. And now at this point if you're here home, stick together in this situation. You have three of your individuals. If you're e home, you have a very good possibility to secure this one. Look at his lamp light even has the smoke in his buzz the Molotov. So you throw down smoke grenade banana. Might as well throw down the Molotov and some of the more harder to clear out angles, then you can just stick the defuse here, but Oh, look at this. Caddy, he's actually going for the wrap route. This is smart. Oh, Caddy's going for it. He might just get this done. I don't think they realize the player is coming in for that position. Oh, they spot him out. They spot him out. But that was such a good idea. I think, was it, I think I've seen a similar play, wasn't it? At the... Yeah, at the Face It Major, which was Renegades against Tai Lu, I like to say. Where I think it was Bented, was in, also in a similar situation where he plants the bomb out there in the middle of nowhere. It then makes his way all the way through Banana, middle to CT spawn, to get the wraparound of the two CTs. And he actually secures the bomb on the back of it. So that was a nice idea in a 1 versus 3 like that, but he didn't succeed. There we go. Fates opening things up here for the Flames. Destroy might just have to be a bit more careful. The Flames almost consumed him and the grenade was very effective. A DR King? Did he spot out the player there? Uh, I don't think he did. That's why he's going to take the bullet to the face. Now this minute hold here from Epo. We'll see if he spot out the player in the boiler and he's going to go for the fight and he's going to get punished. So the round, as we can see, is falling apart here from the T side. You've got to commit to this A side play, I'd like to say. You have impression and caddy. Impression has had a pretty decent game, I'd like to say. Not so much there for the likes of Caddy. Yeah, by this point, 45 seconds remaining, BKRG just going to have to commit to one of the bomb sites by this point, though. I wonder which site will it be. The one flash being thrown out, keeping the CTs on their toes, that they are still in middle. However, we can see that they have now shifted their focus. The CTs know Archway is completely open, so it is very much in the realm of possibility that BTRG are going for the flank here. And I think they've been spotted out. Right now, as they've been spotted out, there is only Lonesome Impression here. Let's find the first one. Good tap on the player. But the... Oh no, the Flames. He can't really plant the bomb out there behind the coffins. He needs to attempt to find a killer in Impression. And Impression playing this one to perfection. Oh, this is awkward, but there we go. Out of time. Here is Impression. He goes in for the third one. But he can get the last one. That's going to be 11 rounds here for Ehom, and they do secure a very solid CT side. Like all things considering, this is probably the side of the map in which Ehom wanted to acquire the mature of the rounds. They got themselves 11. That is very good right now. Now, it's going to come down to BTRG to pull off a comeback here on the CT side. If they don't get the comeback here, I'm sorry folks, but I think this is going to be a 2-0 scrolling here for Ehome. Now, I do see a purchase here from both teams, except the likes of Ehome, they've invested in a lot more utility than the CTs. We can see there's a smoke grenade here from Marek. In fact, it's smoke grenade for Lamplet as well, but he's even with the Molotov as well. And now this is a commitment here towards Banana. Look at the blue boost they've got here. It is so successful here. BTRG, they're getting absolutely pummeled here. They take down free guys, but this is a mistake. They think the B-side's open here, but there is still impression here. He's playing this one quite aggressively here. Trier coming in with a flank here. He might just take down the player. Ooh, he whips the shots, but he gets the kill at the end. Good stuff coming in from Jerry. Can he find the last one? No, he cannot. And at this point, if you're Ehome, it's pretty obvious. You know where your impression is playing from. You just group up, hit the A side, plant the bomb. Standard stuff. Planning it for default. Marek can position himself wherever he wants. He could be in the apartments. He could be in pit. I, to say, I can't say I'm a big... Oh, okay, impression still finds a the kill there, but... I wasn't a very big fan of that setup. I mean, both of the players in the middle... So it really comes down to them having good communication. If, say, one ends up peeking and the other one begins firing off the bullets in the back and he can't get the kill, I mean, that's suddenly a very doable situation for Impression to win a 2 versus 1. 
to get it done in the end. That's the important bit here for Ehome. With them picking up the pistol round, though, I must say this one, folks. BTRG, they must secure this one. They don't secure this force by here. They're again back at the eco. They're going to conceal two rounds, pretty much. They lose this one. The upcoming one is just going to have to be an eco. much going on here for the CT side of BTRG. They're playing this one passively. In a passive setup, they're hoping they might punish the aggression here for Ehome, but that's not really the case for now. The players here from Ehome not even contesting the mid part of the map at all. They have thrown down some smoke grenades here, so they're trying to pull off some sort of fake here. But the CTs aren't even moving an inch. They're holding on to their ground here. And when it comes down to the actual push, we can see that the Ecom players are kind of scattered here, which is the interesting bit. They do have a mid-push going on here, but they're walking down here one by one. That's a big mistake. Impression gets two. ADR picks up a kill as well. And suddenly the round is falling apart here. Lamplight does secure Drear. And even a second kill as well, so now they're going to definitely pursue their way onto the bomb site here. Jerome, I think, has revealed his position, I like to say. Jerome right now. Look towards the balcony here, will get the kill on destroy, and there we go, this round is falling apart here. This is it here. Lamplight, secures the kill, nice shot by him, but that is it. BTRG secured himself as the round. An oppressive matter, I must say. Eho. In that position they were at, a 5 versus 5, with what? 40 seconds remaining. It looked like the players want to commit to the A-side play. It's not a bad idea there. It really came down to the execution. The problem was, Ehome, they were just walking out there in the middle, one by one. One of the players walks in out, second guy walks in out, third guy walks in out by his lonesome, and they get absolutely punished there. I'm not sure if that was the right play there from Ehome. There had to be more cohesion in that round. You would have loved to see two of the players go towards the apartments, clear it out, have a good position towards balcony, and once the initial push ends up happening in middle, then the guy in balcony can pop out, maybe he can secure a kill. That would have been a much better setup. But now, I mean, it's just... He just got wrecked. As simple as that. 12 to 5 is the scoreline. E-Home will respond with a force spy of their own. A couple of Tech Nines being purchased. It's nice to see that the Tech Nine is... Finally, finding some of that footing here in Counter Strike. As it was pretty much all CZs, CZs for days. Now we do see some Tech Nines coming into play. Forty-five seconds remaining. They do have mid presence here for E Home, and they're gonna have a much easier time hitting this bomb site. And in fact, they don't really want to go towards the bomb site. At least not the A side. They have three players here in CT, though. Impression lines up both. This is pretty good setup here. And now Jerome, oh, he's got the F4 out. He secures the kill here on Fierce. And you can see that all the players have been taken out of the equation. It means that BTRG secured themselves the sixth round in here. With the sixth round in their possession, they themselves have reset the economy for e -home. This is, These are pretty important rounds for the likes of BTRG. Now that they've reached the economy here for Ecom, they have a very good possibility of minimizing the scrolling difference, but only five rounds. As beforehand, it was uh, a 12, let me see, yeah, it was a 12 to 2 scroll line. Oh, look at the nades being thrown out. There's so much damage being dealt, but in return, the grenades get thrown out as well. That's going to be it here. That will be the seventh round here for BTRG, whereas Ecom finally can pull out the purchase here. They have utility to work with. That's the good thing here for Ehom. AK-47 is coming into play, as well as a decent amount of utility for the terrorists to work with. Now, I am quite surprised, though, that you have guys like ADR King and Caddy who are still playing with the SMGs. In a situation like this, where every single round is going to matter for you so much, BTRG, 
you want to have the best possible purchase, so I'm quite dumbfounded to know that SMGs are coming into play. Though at the same time, let's be real. The SMGs in Counter-Strike are quite powerful. The MP9 can definitely do some damage here. The UMP with a slower fire rate is very good against players with Kevlar. And I think both of the players with SMGs are stationed on the B side, so it's a part of the map where definitely close quarters engagements can make the difference here. Looks like the E-Home guys think again go for the wraparound of the B side. That's where the players seem to be heading towards. At least one of them is. Marek is taking out the pitcher here now, but he's fresh in here. In a position where he doesn't really have a single teammate backing him up. He will be taking out the picture here, and Fierce, they cut out Fates in rotation here. Fates books the first one, can get the second one. Dreer is there to help him out. And now that's the bomb side open for business. They can plant the bomb here, and in this position, the T's. You've really got to change their spot. Playing there on the side itself, not the best position here. You can definitely have a guy in pit, which they have done right now, Ehome. This is good. Now, it is going to come down to the retake here. I do like the fact here that BTRG, yes, they will have players coming in there for long. That's the main push. But they will also have a guy in the apartments who can eliminate the player in pit. Flamplight doesn't see him. That's a big problem right now. They do take to the pit guy. And that is going to be the round here for BTRG. They got plenty of time with the defuse. And that will be 8 to 12. I've got to say, though, in this situation, if you're Ehum, you were winning at one point 12 to 4. You're thinking, right, this is looking easy. We're going to be able to close this one out very quickly here without breaking much of a sweat. Now that it seems like BTRG has picked up four rounds in a row, I think if you're Ehum, you're going to begin to sweat just a little bit. Let's be real. You're so close that you're just giving yourself the victory here in the second map. No, scratch that. Not only the second map, the entire best of three. So it's very important for you to pick up some of these upcoming rounds here if you are the likes of Ehome. And that might come into play here. There might be some pressure in that regard. You're thinking, right, we're so close to securing a victory. What are these four rounds? The partial investment here from Ehome. The have players here on the Deagles about to hit this B-bomb side. No utility here from BTRG in return. That's a kill for Destroyer. I think on the back of it, the push does take place here. There is, in fact, still Caddy here on the coffins. Good position here with the AUG. Just racks him up. Easy cleanup here on the players. And there we go. Nine rounds here for BTRG. Ecom in a position where, yes, they can pull off an investment. It's going to be a beefy one. Every single player seeing it around $5,000, $6,000. They can invest in an AWP, I think might one come out. Lamplight? No? Alright. 5 AK-47s, a decent amount of utility, that is also quite a lot. So, the fact that we see AK-47s come into play, and not an AWP, I think we will see a faster style of rank for Ehome. There we go, look at this, the AK-47s, they do give you the movement speed, then the ops, and it's gonna be insane to pick up the first kill here on ADR King. He takes down the player, and that's now the B-side defender by his lonesome on the side. And of course, you don't want to have only one player on the B-side. You want to have at the very least two, and that is why we have a second player coming in here. That means the A-side defensive has been softened up here. Oh, it's nice for Caddy. There is a gap. He abuses it, and he secures the kill. And oh, they're actually going to get down with the push here. Good flash running again. But at that point, Marek decided to back away. They're playing this one quite slow right now, Ehome. They realized the one simple thing in this round. They've got time to work with, so they don't necessarily have to commit to the BSI play, but what they can do is pull off an elaborate ruse by throwing down the utility here on the side. Oh, he actually misses the smoke day there, Caddy. I think he is. I don't think he wanted to, to land there close by the coffins. But that's the thing. This fake is not effective. The BTRG players still holding positions here in middle. Or shall I say, holding the one position here. It's impression. He wins the fight against Merrick. I think they realize 25 seconds remaining. There's not a single soul in the middle. It has to be the B play. Caddy here with the AUG picks up the first one. They're not even looking towards him. That's a big mistake. They do take him out. 
Now it is a two versus two in which Ehome got plenty of time to plant the bomb. Trying to get towards Coffins. And BTRG, they're quick on the rotate. We already have a player coming in through Banana. We have Fates going in through Church. They don't really have utility to force these players out of position. So it's really going to come down to gunfights here. Dreer expecting to see the player there, but we won't see anyone just yet. They're sticking this one together here, but they're going to have to hurry up there. They need to find the frags. If they find one on Faith, that's, uh, fights gets done. And it's plenty of time with a defuse. It will be another round here of BTRG. They have now reached double digits. They have won six rounds in a row on the CT side. Oh boy, this is not looking too good here for the likes of Ehome. Losing the six rounds in the CT side of Inferno has got to be quite frustrating here for the terrorists. At one point, they were actually quite close to securing the victory here, it looked like. When it was 12 to 4, you're thinking, right, Ehome, they picked up the piss round. From here on out, it's going to be a freeze. But because they won at force by, things have just turned for the worse here, and Caddy. He even picks up a kill through the smoke. That is quite the satisfying here for Ehome. Not the start they were looking for. Now, we saw one of the things what BTRG did on the T side was actually changing up the pace in some of the latter stages of the half. So I think Ecom gonna have to change up their pace as well because right now them playing such a slow style, they're just getting mowed down. That's the thing. They didn't even get close to the bomb set and all five BTRG players are able to pick up a kill. And there we go, that is now going to be a scenario in which Ecom it is back to the eco. It's gonna be a twelve this twelve scoreline, folks. And thing is though, we actually saw a pause being taken from Ecom in the past. And they were winning, let me think, 8-4, to four, I'd like to say. Yeah, when they were winning 8-4 to four on the CD side of Inferno, we actually saw a pause coming through. And now, when they're losing, pretty much, they've lost 7 rounds in a row right now. When they are losing in such a massive scoreline, they don't take a pause? That's just weird. That's just very peculiar. Maybe they think, right, we can still pull this off. We're E-Home. We can get this done. But I'm not seeing it, Ehome. Not yet, at least. And this is a round where you see Ehome here are only the pistols. Now, this is the type of round I want to see Ehome just make a straight up push on the bomb side. Have a couple players in the apartments, have a couple players coming in for short. And try to succeed here. Dreer though, oh, they line up for him. Good shots coming in. And now the other players, they're kind of late to the party. They throw down the utility, but at that point, BTRGs, they got players in some great positions here in Cemetery, in the pit. Though, not too concerned of hitting the A bomb side from what I can tell. This is, in fact, insane here in the apartments. Kind of stuck here. The smoke is blocking off his vision. And once he's gonna move out, easy kill there from Dreer. Stir right here with AK47, he has picked it up. Find a simple second kill. Now in a pretty good position to plant the bomb though. There is still a player coming in for short. I'm not sure if the Stray is gonna be able to come out on top here. He's going for the fight though, he succeeds. But of course, there's Kate in the back lines. And there we go, 12 to 12 is the scroll line. And oh boy, if you're a fan here of Ehome, I think you're sweating. I think the players are sweating as well. I'm sweating because it's super hot in my room. But it is a scenario in which Ehome, they might just lose this one by this point. BTRG, they were down 12-4. to 4. I can't stress that enough. And now they're pulling off the miraculous comeback here. And Ehome, they're back here with the investment here. And I think it is going to be one of the slower rounds, right? Where they have utility, they're going to play it out, they're going to allow the opponents to use their utility on the CD side, and then they're going to make the commitment. I think that's going to be the case here. 
That clearly is not a winning formula here, Eho. Come on, let's keep things simple. Let's make a fast rush here on one of the bomb sites. There we go. Now they're making it work here. They have four of their players swarming into the site. They should be able to secure this one. No one's really looking towards Fate's positioning. Fate's goes down. There's still a player in the pit. If they eliminate three of their good, that's the bomb set here for Ehom. They can plant it in the same position. They have a free versus free post plant. This is good for the T's. Nade being thrown out. Oh, not a single point of damage. Now that's a bit of a shame. Once the smoke begins to fade, though, there's going to be problems here for Ehom. You have two of the players here on the site. Not the best positions, though. Destroyer spots that one of the CTs here. We do have a player in Pit Maharak. He doesn't even have to peek in this position. If he survives there long enough, that's going to be good here. But no, he goes for the fight. The players are falling apart here. Destroyer, he's got the AK out. Spraying wildly, hoping to find the kill. He does succeed here. Four kills. It's what it takes for Ehom to secure a round. And there we go. They get it done, Ehom. But it wasn't easy. Oh boy, it wasn't easy. Now they've noticed there is clearly a weakness here for the likes of BTRG. They've gone for the early stack towards Banana yet again, having three of their individuals throwing down the utility over towards Banana, leaving only two guys on the A side. And so, Ehom, the capitalize of it. You have their players going for the wraparound, a couple individuals coming in for short, you have players coming in for long, they can very easily overwhelm the players on the side, and they succeed in that regard. They go for the faster play, BTRG didn't expect it to be so quick. For the past 12 or so rounds, it has been Ehom playing a very slow style of terror side of Inferno. It clearly hasn't worked out, and once they do change up the pace, they catch the BTRG players off guard, and they finally secure themselves the round. Their first ever gun round here, that's the thing, their first ever gun round here on the terror side of Inferno. There's still gonna have to be what? Uh, yeah, three rounds here for Ecom to secure victory here. And by this point, pretty much all three rounds are gonna have to be gun rounds. There we go, faster style of play here. They don't really check Dreer in that position. That's a big mistake. He pulls off free. And that's now a push absolutely demolished. There's really nothing Merrick and Destroyer can do with this position as they maybe die. And that's about it. Home. Can't succeed at all. Dreer picks up the four kills here, and pretty much it was a nice idea, though, from the terrorists. I'm not gonna lie, it was a nice idea. But at the same time, we just saw that the positioning of Dreer was so powerful, they were hoping to get the guy in pit. They think it right. Let's just jump out of the apartment, let's just make our way into the pit, get rid of the guy as soon as possible, and then from that point onward, we're gonna work our way into the bomb site. We saw that Dreer was holding a off angle, he was right behind the hay bills. You don't really expect a CT to be there, and there we go. BTRG, they punish e -Home's perception of this round, and this means that in this 13 to 13 scroll, we could actually see BTRG in the lead by this point. We can see that the guys here from the terrorists only the pistols to work with, though. Those pistols, one thing to know, they're very quick. They can actually wait. Uh, fierce. I actually thought he might begin to shoot the player there in long, but he's still being very thorough. He wants to clear out the corner so that he don't get shut down. We have the strip. Picks up an important kill here with the CZ, I think. This will prompt the home players to continue on pushing forward. Dreer, Jerome, and Jerome again to find the kills. This round is falling apart here for home. Fates gets it done. Three kills for Fates, and a round here for BTRG. Well now, we're in a position in which Ehome, if they don't secure this round, they're pretty much back in their difficult limbo of having to go for a force spot. It's going to be looking very poor. Some upgraded pistols, I presume, maybe some SMGs, an AK-47, one or two. 
So if Ehome still want to succeed here in the second map, they must secure this map. There's no, no, not this map, pardon me. They must secure this round. That's the important bit. If they don't get this round, well then, I think it is going to be BTRG with the impressive comeback here. And we will head on over to our third map of the best of three, which I do believe is Mirage. And if it is Mirage, well, BTRG are pretty good specialists on that map. Back to the methodical approach here, Ehome. I can't really say I'm a big fan of it, but that this time around, they've actually taken over some banana presents, which is very nice. I can't really recall um, seeing a lot of executes from the Ehome players on the B side. They're going back towards the A side, and they're making the right call here. There's only 40 seconds remaining. If they were to commit right now, they can still win the round here. There's only two players on the side, but no, there's... I think they're overthinking this one. They're going for a double fake here. Is that going to work? Is that the name of the game here for a home? That looks like it. And now they're back here on the B side. 20 seconds remaining. There's three players here from BTRG. Can e home break the defensive? It's going to be difficult. Smokes, Molotovs, all the utility in the world is running in here on the side. Not a single kill. Actually, no, there is a single kill here for Fierce. But it is going to be BTRG shutting down the push in its entirety. And Merrick, he was out here for the flank. But he's going to get a flank himself. 15 rounds here for BTRG. And they're one round away. Just that one round away from securing victory here. That's how impressive their comeback has been. Another terrorist town, understandably so. When you're so close and securing the map here, Ehome, um, I would have probably suggested to take a time out a bit earlier in the game, but here we are in a position where Impression has racked up 28 kills, not that bad. They would actually put in the numbers here, BTRG on the CD side. Surely, surely in a position like this, Ehome, do you even have the motivation to close this one out? I mean, it's going to be difficult. That is the thing. That is going to be super difficult in this position. It is now commitment here to the beat bomb from me home, I think. We might see a faster sell around. We have even three players here in Banana, so it could just be a straight up commitment on the B side. Keeping things pretty simple. Smoke grenade on the B side. Went towards coffins and any more smoke grenades? No, not really. So I think once they throw down that one smoke grenade, we will see the commitment here from the T side. It's about time we see a push here on the B side. Early on here into the round, they're throwing down all of their utility. Will anyone check the player? Oh, they don't check him. Come on, that's such a common position to go in. You have four players coming in. Jerome's Molotov will take down Lamplight. And the round is just falling apart here. Fierce finds the last player in that position. It is now going to be... Oh, even lands the shot there through the smoke. Fierce left with an all to do here. One versus three. Can he pull it off? Finds the first one, not the second one, though. Even though he gets three kills into the round, that wasn't enough. And that is going to be it, folks, here. That is the victory here for the likes of BTRG. They secured 16-13. to They definitely deserve it after a comeback as impressive as this one. And now, folks, we're jumping into our third map, which will be... In this case, Mirage, and at this point, this has now become a very winnable game here for BTRG. Can E-Home pull it back, though? We'll have to wait and see. We're heading over to a quick commercial break. We'll be right back, so stay tuned with some more Counter-Strike action. Charge up your game with excitement. Highest odds on the market.
Coverage of all live and pre-match events. Place your bets with Solid Bookmaker and win with your favorite teams. Take what's rightfully yours with GG.